I hope that the understanding in this video allows you to be more generous and giving towards yourself. And I'm going to explain a couple of things that Neville has spoken about. And when it comes to, you know, everyone is you pushed out, he often speaks about this. And that has to go hand in hand with the idea that God plays all the parts. Now, God in this case is the awareness in man, the I am or the consciousness or the I, you know, the sense of self. Because one would say, I am John, and I am Jane, and I am Edward. But before that, we say, I am. So I am truly is the thing that works in harmony with itself. And when you assume something, you would claim, I am whatever, then things you know reshuffle themselves, and it plays its part. God plays the part to receive the new I am that you have uh, taken. And it's a, it's, a, it's a statement inside the mind. It's a way of being inside the mind. That's what you're claiming. It's not um, an emotion you're seeking or a thought. It's a sense of self that you're seeking, a sense of being. And when you hear that God plays all the parts, you don't have to become afraid. There's only one being here. So for a long time... I felt unsafe in my world. I felt truly unsafe inside myself. And I would assume safety, but I didn't quite see how it would come into play. But once I saw that it's one being that plays all the parts, once you assume safety, you assume respect, you assume, you start to imply these things inside yourself. So the idea in this case, a very simple illustration I can give you is that right now I'm speaking on this microphone. But I'm implying while I speak that I'm being listened to. I don't feel insecure that I wonder if someone is listening to me. I wonder if they're taking me seriously. I just imply it while I talk. So you imply these things inside yourself. And I want this, what I'm about to say, to be one of the most um, thoughtful and how should I say, important things I'm going to say. And it's this. The things that you want from other people are actually the things you want to give yourself. Because there's only one being here called I am. So for a long time, and I think everyone's done this at certain points, We'd seek the world to give us a certain, uh, maybe to make us, we want the world to see us as brilliant, or we want someone in our life to love us and see us as a, a kind and caring person, or we want somebody to see us as excellent or whatever it is, as capable. Um, we want others to first see our confidence before we assume it within ourselves. And Really think about the things you want from other people, what you want them to give you. Because Neville says this. He says to change the conceptions of yourself before you change others. Um, because they're only messengers revealing to you what you're assuming within. Now, if you take that statement seriously, what it's telling you is that if you're seeking for other people to see you as whatever it is, that is actually how you desire to see yourself. But you've put a condition upon it, which is this other person has to see you that, that first. It's almost like you need someone to believe in you before you can believe in yourself. And that right there, if you can understand what's being said here, you will be freed in such a way where you're going to realize that you've abandoned so many, so many times of yourself to, other, to this thing called another person that they must first whatever before I can. And that's a condition. You are allowed to see yourself as brilliant if you want. You don't need someone to first see you as attractive for you to assume attractiveness. These are things that are all within you. And then you learn to accept yourself. And yourself contains everything. So I take acceptance of the self in a different route. And you can accept yourself in the moment um, except that maybe you see yourself in a lowly fashion and you can um, create a new 
you know, outfit in the mind and you can try on. But you also need to learn to accept yourself as the whole being that you are. That you contain everything inside. That you contain the lack thereof in confidence and you contain the abundance in it as well. That you contain both. So you learn to accept both inside you. Accept everything inside you. That if, if Neville's right, all things are contained within you. Test that. Just test it out. See if you have the opposite of the thing that you otherwise are not desiring. Maybe you feel unloved. But the idea of being loved also exists within you. And you learn to accept that part as well. You've already accepted the one side. Might as well accept the other. So you practice every day learning to accept. It's just a practice of acceptance. You don't necessarily have to um, fight your thoughts, as I always say. Learn to accept new ones in its place. You learn to accept new things inside yourself. And that's all you're doing. And you don't put conditions upon it. Because the reason why you put conditions upon yourself is because you were taught to. Someone taught you that in order to love yourself, it must be conditional. Someone taught you that love is this conditional thing that towards yourself, if you don't uh, accomplish X, Y, and Z first, then you can't love yourself. If you don't have others loving you first, you can't love yourself. If You have to have everyone like you first before you can like yourself. All of these conditions. But if you can see that the things you want from another is the thing you actually want to give yourself, then you won't rely on others. You will feel self-sufficient. And then you can give that version of yourself to the world. And then you become more of a giving person because you feel abundant inside. It's only those who feel they need to take feel lack. That's the only reason. It's not that they actually are lacking. Nobody's lacking. It's just in different states of mind that maybe they have believed in the lack or the loss of their whatever it is that they desired. But you can see that you are allowed to give yourself the very thing you want another to give you, then I really think you will find a deep, deep sense of peace and freedom from that. And then the, the, those, you know, since there's only one being here, that change in attitude of the self results in a change in the outer world because there's only because God plays all the parts. God does it all. And by God, I mean the, the I am inside. So you learn to deny the senses. You learn to stop for a second. Maybe the outer world is chaotic. You learn to not be disturbed for a moment at a time. And you enter inside yourself. You really feel like almost you're opening a door inside you. Enter it. Feel safe that you've entered into your, your internal home, and feel yourself to be a sense of uh, feel yourself to be a person inside, a sense of being that is behind the mask that we all wear, behind the garment that we all this fleshly garment that we all wear. Feel you've entered inside, and almost put a smile on your face, and assume something new about yourself, regardless of the senses. It doesn't have to be this difficult thing where you have to loop your scene a million times you are allowed to just assume something new now whether you persist in that new change is up to you whether you keep it because it's yours or you you let go of it and drop it it's up to you but learn to realize that or pay attention to what you want from other people it's the things you want to give yourself you want other people to praise you and compliment you in a very specific way which is fine but that's actually what you want to do for yourself. That's how you want to see yourself. So it's a very good indicator that how would I feel if others did see me this way? You might get a feeling. How would I feel if others saw me as brilliant? How would I feel if I was seen in that light? And then you'll start to feel it. But remove them for a second and start to see yourself that way without conditions. Give yourself that feeling without conditions. Don't reason with it. Uh, don't fear it. Don't wonder if it's going to last or if it's going to go away. You just feel it. Just experience it or play with it or entertain yourself with it or just sit with it. You don't have to do anything. You know, Neville always says to not lift a finger. So you learn to not lift that finger. You learn to just rest in that new way of seeing yourself without conditions. I cannot stress that enough. One of the biggest conditions 
that we place upon ourselves, that we first must have someone to love us first or we must have someone to whatever it is first before we can give ourselves what we want. And as you know, D.H. Lawrence says that the loveless never find love. They only make manifest their own lovelessness. Only the loving find love and they never have to seek for it. If that's the case, then I can't go to another to give me what I want because they're only messengers because God's playing all the parts. So I go inside myself and I change, if you want to say God, or I change myself um, to whatever it is I am desiring from other people. That's how you figure out what you want. Look to see what you want other people to see you as. And don't be ashamed of it. Do not be ashamed. Everyone wants something in this world. So don't be ashamed. Don't feel that it's embarrassing that you want to be seen as X, Y, and Z. Uh, first see yourself that way. You know, Neville says don't, you don't break the mirror to try to change the person in the mirror. That doesn't make sense. You don't, um, in that sense, he's trying to say that prayer is the answer to, to avoid the conflict in life. And he also says something so specific that I think is necessary to understand. Is He says not to wait for life to become chaotic before you pray. And prayer in this sense is to imagine that you have or that you are, whatever it is you want. He says to not wait until life becomes too much. That to imagine before. That to assume before. And wake up in the morning and assume something for yourself. Believe you have something. Whatever it is. Feel that you have it. Imply it in the mind that you have it and believe in that implication. And again, the example I give is walk, walk as though you know where you're going. Talk as though everyone's listening. Start to imply these things. Um, act as though you're respected. Feel that inside. Maybe You don't have to do anything physically. Just in imagination, do it. That's who you need to change is the inner man because that's who you are. That's who you change. You go inward and you change how you are in there. Chances are you're having nightmares. Chances are you're thinking those thoughts are independent of you, that they have the power of their own. Chances are you might feel that they're imposing themselves upon you. Chances are you're feeling that there's no control. Now, if you feel like you have no control inside your mind, it's because you, the inner man, the inner man inside, feels that they lost that. If you feel poor inside, it's because you feel like you lost your wealth inside. If you feel like you um, are, you know, are being overpowered by thoughts is because you feel powerless. You are assuming these things about yourself inside. And you don't need another. You don't need this. You don't need a sense to reflect back to you. First, you can change inside. You can will it to be so inside. So you, you remember or you uh, realize you forgot you were powerful. You remember that you are or you uh, thought you lost your power, but you actually never lost it to begin with. You just thought you did. So you learn to start to become more abundant inside. You start to imply things inside. You don't imagine t for it to be so. You imagine it being so. That's the difference. You imagine it being so. That's, what, that's why Neville says you want to imply it is so. Find something that implies it or a feeling that implies it. It's not to imagine so it can become so. You imagine it being so. And if you don't know what you want, which I've struggled with for so long, figure out the things you want from other people. What do you want them to see you as? What do you want from them? Stop asking them to give it to you and give it to yourself. You don't need them. And then all of a sudden, your world will reflect that new state. And then you will see how this works. You will see how this works. You will start to give yourself what you want and you will feel so much confidence in your daytime. You will walk naturally your shoulders will go back, your head will come up. You don't have to do anything physically. It just will happen. And then those will feel that energy you have that you're pushing out, and they'll respond to it. Because there's only one being here. I know the difference. I grew up in a way where I was totally disrespected. And I grew up as an adult to become disrespected. I felt, I've, I've witnessed this, where there's been times where I've assumed respect, I've assumed confidence, and then, in my world, it just happens. And then, give it two months, I fall back and I feel low again. I feel disrespected. I feel like I'm not going to be seen as uh, important. And then nobody does. So I know it works for both. 
But it's not really both. It's just working imagination. It's just working the only thing that's here. We kind of make it a, a dual thing to make sense to us, but in reality, it's just one thing being worked. It's you know We're just exercising this law. And learn to exercise it daily. That's what Neville's saying. Don't wait until something in your life becomes too hectic. Exercise this all the time. You don't it doesn't take long. You just have to just assume you have something. Walk in your daytime uh, assume they have something. It's just because it's just yourself. It's just one being here. So assume that your friend has what they want. Assume that your uh love has what they want. But um I hope that this has shown you a new way that of learning to not desire, not by suppressing it, but by fulfilling it.